Hi everyone, this is Sick Love. I'm Tallulah and you're watching What's It To You, the show where we interview artists about whatever it is they want to talk about. On today's episode, we are in West London club Lalo with the gorgeous Charles discussing what it means to reinvent yourself and evolve as an artist. Hey, it's Charles. You're watching What's It To You. I'm here with Tallulah talking about evolving as an artist. Hi Charles, hey. how are you? Good, thank you. How are you? I'm good. So today <laughs> we are here talking about evolving as an artist and yeah. as a person. Uh -huh. So do you want to start at the beginning as a child? What were you like? How did you express yourself? So it was funny, like I, well, as a kid, I, I remember my first CD was Holly Valance, Kiss Kiss. Love that. Yeah, it was cute. And I used to like put on shows for my mum and dad mm -hmm. in the living room. It was really cute and I'd like, wrap my top up and like tie it and like make my aunties and my uncles sit down and I'd dance at, like, on this red rug as if it was my stage. Aww. So I was so extra already at yeah. that age. Um, so it kind of started there and then my mum was always like, she wanted to put me into something so I, like, I started in musical theatre so mm -hmm. she like put me into that like singing, acting and dancing. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there it kind of developed into what I am now, I guess. Mm -hmm. But so straight away, like your family and you kind of knew that that was where... Definitely, 100%, yeah. My yeah. brother was like the polar opposite. So he was older than me, but he was like really quiet, yeah, really calm. And I was the one like doing split leaps and love that. sequins. Also <laughs> love Holly Valance. I was watching I know, yeah. an old um, Pop World interview the other yeah. day and she's on there and she actually comes across so nice. Really? Yeah, she's like such a babe, it. yeah. She's really cool. Um, but so what about as a teenager then, like growing up and in school and stuff? Yeah, I mean, that was where it kind of dipped out a bit. Mm. I feel like when you're younger and like you have social pressures, I think when, when I started to realise that all the kids around me started to realize, oh, you dance or oh, you sing, it yeah. kind of like threw me off a bit. So I remember like for a good couple of years, like I, I kind of stopped doing it all. Mm. It caused a bit of friction with me and my mum as well at the time because she was just like, what are you doing? Like, don't throw this away. Mm. Um, but yeah, and then when I got to about 15, 16 was when I realised actually, no, this is what I want to do. Yeah. So I got like got my arse into gear and started back again. Mm. I guess your mum could probably see as well that it wasn't you stopping because you wanted to. Yeah. It yeah. was because of... Yeah, and as well, like my mum used to be a ballerina. Oh, and wow. um, yeah, 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 yeah. So she used to be a ballerina and... Um, she did she was doing really fucking well mm. and they it's same thing happened to her when she got to like 15 mm. when it, she her career was really going to start to take off like a lot of girls at school and stuff like used to take the piss out of her mm. so she stopped yeah. and i think she kind of just saw in me what happened to her and she never like took it back up so i think she yeah i'm grateful to her i think yeah because otherwise i wouldn't be here for sure you know? yeah what about like style wise though? Like as a teenager, were you? No, in <laughs> no, 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 no. I had some f awful looks. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like you have to go wrong to go right. Yeah, 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 for sure. I feel like, yeah, teenagers now, there's so many who I'm like, oh my God, how, how is your makeup so Do you like, not think it freaks point? me out? Yeah. Like I've got a niece and stuff and I'm like, you lot never like, you lot will never know what it looked like to be like, look battered. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like we'd like go in like wearing the craziest things like, I remember the girls in my year, like it was all Dream Map Moose. Oh my God, Very thick application, yeah. all around the lip. Yeah, because it was the thing to it have was just it like over All of you, lips, yeah, so, just yeah. very, and they used to rub it on their fingers. And then I remember like, I tried out so many different looks. Yeah. I remember I went through like a punk stage, and then I went through like a bit more of like a tracksuit sort of like stage. Mm -hmm. I, did, I, did, I tried everything, I think, with fashion and yeah. got like so much of it wrong. I'm yeah, so yeah, grateful yeah. actually that Bebo doesn't exist because oh like God, those yeah. photos if they were to resurf it would be yeah tragic are there any like outfits you can like pinpoint remember that were just like no go uh yeah i used to have like these little red converse and i got like i went to the market and got like these thick laces that were like had loads of different like graffiti like writing like <laughs> different colors and i laced them up and they were like huge like the laces were literally just spilling out yeah. everywhere and I used to wear like them red things with like these bright green trousers <laughs> and like a, an open sh it was no it but it was still quite like out there though. very out there yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah i was always quite out there yeah I, I remember being livid that i didn't win best dressed at prom oh yeah that's, yeah, yeah which is annoying i had my little river island boots on <laughs> <laughs> i remember so my, one of my worst was like it had been my first pair of heels 
and my mum really didn't want me to get high heels anyway like she's yeah. like you're too young um and they were from like just some like random really random shop on Bromley High Street mm. and they were white patent um stilettos and That's I wore cute, them, but I wore them with black tights <laughs> and I remember my mum being like okay well it lo- as lo- if you're gonna wear heels like just do not wear white with black tights yeah and I was like no it's cute no you it don't know cute. anything yeah <laughs> It's so true. You don't really see kids running about like this. They no. just always look good. Yeah. I think as well, part of that is because of like subcultures and stuff. There's yeah. not, because of the internet and stuff, there's not as many like niche like subcultures of like yeah. you and your friends all dressing the same. It's more like you and every other person your age. Yeah, very true. Yeah. yeah. Um, but so when do you think you actually got to a point where you felt like, okay, I'm like solid in how I show myself like how what I wear who I am I don't know it's quite hard because I feel like it's always like ever changing Mm. I don't know like I think when I got to about must have been when I was about 21 Mm. and that was when I started to realize that like I stopped dressing for other people of like the fashions that were kind of going on at the time and I kind of started to wear stuff that I wanted to wear and I remember once, like, my friend kind of saying to me, like, they're like, oh, they're like, oh, yeah, but you always dress, like, how you want. Like, you don't really, and I never really thought of it like that before. And then I was like, oh, it was a moment where I was a bit like, oh, okay, maybe I, maybe I am starting to, like, sit in my own sort of, like, lane with mm. what I want to wear. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I feel like it's always changing, to be fair. I go yeah. through, I go through different times feeling like I should dress, yeah, it just yeah. depends on my mood, I guess. Yeah. I'm exactly the same. Like, I'll, there'll be times where I'm like, oh my God, I should look like an adult. Or, yeah. Oh no, I look way too adult. Yeah. Whatever. My thing now is that, like, I just want to look fucking fab all the time. You do look fucking fab. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but just dressed up all the time. Yeah. Like, nothing's ever too much, you know? Yeah. That's my how thing I like is, to as do well it. As well, like, nothing doesn't go together. Yeah. Like, in my opinion, everything matches. Yeah, 100%. Everything. It's just how you carry it. Yeah. It? For sure. Yeah. So what about like evolving in that time? So you went, you started in musical theatre. Yeah. And then how did that become pop? Because I, I was doing a show at the time and um, I was about 20, I think. Mm. No, I was 18 when I was doing that. And I thought it was kind of what I wanted. And I kind of got into it because that's kind of what I'd been told that I should be. And I was a creative person my whole life. Mm. And obviously when you're creative, they go, okay, go into like dance musical theatre, like that's Mm. what you should do. And I kind of did that. But then I realised when I started to get jobs that actually there was no creativity in it. Yeah. It was very much like someone else had created it and you were the robot to do it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I didn't really enjoy that. I didn't enjoy like going on the stage and pretending to be someone else or like singing a certain way or someone being like, you know, like you're not sounding how we want you to sound. Mm Mm-hmm. And I was doing a show at the time, and weirdly enough, the guy that was in it was Sean Escoffery. Mm-hmm. He, um, he sings Days Like This, he's like an old, he's like a soul oh, yeah, artist. Yeah. Um, he was playing one of the leads, and he kind of got me in writing, because mm-hmm. I was talking to him about it, and he was like, cool, like, let's set up some sessions and stuff. And we got chatting and stuff, and he, that was kind of the gateway for me, yeah. to be able to express myself and like go on a stage for the first time and be you. Charles, yeah. rather than someone else. Yeah, it's funny as well because you have got such a unique voice. It's mm. <laughs> like difficult to imagine you playing someone else. Someone else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'd always, it would always, I'd always get in trouble. Yeah, because they'd always be like, you don't sound right. And I'm like, I don't know what else you want me to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. In terms of evolving as a person, are there any like major things that have happened that have like contributed to big changes? Mm. Yeah, I think. Um, I think having it, like, I had a bit of a, uh, a gap mm. um, in music. Because I first released stuff and I thought, I thought I, I, thought I was ready and I mm. thought, like, I knew what I wanted to be and stuff like that. Um, and I had to take some time away because it's so easy to get, like, wrapped up in the music industry in general and mm. stuff. Um, so I had a bit of a shit time, actually, over that, over that period. And I remember, I didn't mean to take two years, but it kind of happened that way. Mm. But since then, 
I evolved so much in that two years that I'm so grateful that that happened because yeah. otherwise I wouldn't be like where I am now. I probably would have given up, yeah. I think. I think definitely it's, whenever you like start creating something, I think if it is in like a high pressure industry, mm. it is really difficult to then, I guess like stay on track with what it is you want to show and how you want to portray yourself yeah, yeah. because there's so many like outside influences. Yeah, hundred percent. It's difficult to not like. And you're constantly growing as well as a person. Yeah. So it's like what I wanted a, a year ago at the time isn't what I would want now. Do you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it's trying to trying to work out. I want I wanted a long career and I yeah. didn't want this to just be like some quick thing that happened. So like, I had to work out. Yeah, I had to have that time to work out what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, and so now, like, for anyone that doesn't know your music or know you that's watching, mm -hmm. how would you describe that? Like, how would you describe yourself as an artist? Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I'd say that I'm... Well, I'm, I feel like I'm an R&B soul singer, mm. but a lot of my... A lot of Charles is... The, the whole package as in like a lot of it is about the art for me as well so like music mm. videos and, st yeah. and visuals and I knew that I wanted to be an artist like back in the 90s where like it was when you saw them it was a full-on show yeah that was a you know like you thing. get up there and like they're this person mm. I wanted to do that like I didn't really want to like and it works for some people you know like sat and just with a guitar and they're just themselves and that that mm. really works but for me i wanted to make a show i wanted yeah. it to be a persona i wanted to mm -hmm. yeah but so then is, does it feel does there feel like there's a difference between charles and then you at home and not performing yeah i reckon uh, there's like a it's, um, it's a heightened version okay yeah but sense. no yeah i am i i am still pretty similar yeah um I think a lot of people, I'm a lot more chill in day-to-day -day life, I mm -hmm. think. Obviously, when I'm on stage and stuff, like, that's when I'm my most comfortable. Yeah. And that's where I love, that's what I love doing, being on the stage. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I think I'm just a heightened version of myself. Yeah. For sure. You're right, though. Like, I think it, it was definitely, like, a 90s and, like, early 2000s kind of thing that artists had... I guess that even with albums, because mm. there's a whole like body of work that then usually went along with, you know, booklets or like yeah. artwork that then was throughout the whole album and shows and whatever. And is that something then you want to? Yeah, a hundred percent. And this is the thing as well. Like it's hard. I feel like not that I've shot myself in the foot, but I feel like I've started this like journey, obviously, mm -hmm. and. I want to do all these things but at the same time obviously that comes with like budget yeah. and lots of it yeah. do you know what I mean so it's like it's like working out how to adapt things to like do these sick things that I've always dreamed of mm. but obviously trying to keep it to my means yeah. do you know what I mean yeah 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 so champagne life lemonade lemonade budget, budget girl you know how <laughs> it is um, but so what is next? Like, what do you have planned? Is there anything new coming out? Yeah, so I've got like a load of singles that are lined up for next year. Mm -hmm. There may be a little EP, depending. Um, but yeah, next year I just wanted to release a lot more. Mm -hmm. So you, there's definitely going to be way more music next mm -hmm. year, which will be really fun. Amazing. Um, yeah, it should be good. And cool. music videos and shit like that. Amazing. So it should be fun. So between releasing stuff, obviously you did have a little break. Yeah. Now, do you feel like, now that you're back and releasing stuff, is there a pressure to kind of like maintain a consistency with releasing stuff? Yeah. I felt that way more this time around. Like oh, really? after, Yeah, after releasing the EP, it does feel like, I feel like, I guess I feel like people are waiting to see what I'm going to do. Mm. So with that, it does come a lot of pressure. But it's exciting. Like I feel like I'm... I'm excited for people to hear like the new stuff as well. Like it's mm. evolving like into something else. Like not something else, but I feel like it's leveling up. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. This is the thing though. Like I feel like other artists probably have been like I assume loads of other artists have been in this position. But you kind of get to this point where you release stuff and it starts going really well. And like I said before, people are waiting for your next step, mm. and you always feel like you should like level up from that. Yeah. 
I find it quite hard, like, almost I feel like you're trying to, you're like chasing it because I'm like, yeah. oh shit, I don't want to, I don't want to miss out on this wave that I'm on. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? But then there's so many things that, that, that come into place that like kind of stop you from doing things, yeah. you know, like, even like with COVID and stuff, like mm, totally. there's been so many barriers with that. And then feeling like, oh, I should be releasing more, but is there any point? And then like mm. financially as well, like, cause obviously it costs so much to do these things yeah. and the stuff that I want to do. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I feel like I'm in a great position with it all, mm. but there's sometimes I do feel a bit like I'm like, ah. Yeah, I think there's definitely, I think previously there was this like real thing that like, if an artist had momentum, they had to like keep that ball rolling yeah. and release, release, release. But I think now like, I guess again because of the internet and stuff like there's so many things come out so often that you can take your time more and I think yeah. like people do I guess can recognize like the actual process behind yeah. things now yeah more. yeah I think people are more aware of the process yeah definitely. and that it takes time yeah you know like rather than just like churning out loads of shit that doesn't really mean anything mm. I'd rather sit back and have like four or five months of not releasing anything so yeah. that I can produce something really good, even mm. though it's just one single. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I think as well, like people and like fans and stuff like to be, feel like they're on that journey with you, I guess. Yeah, definitely. So to like know what you're doing, yeah, in between or yeah. when you're in the studio, or if you're writing or not or whatever, to be like a part yeah, of that. Yeah, and it's nice that like, you can do other things like now, I guess, like you can do you don't have to be releasing music to stay current. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Which is kind of like a nice thing as well, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't have to be releasing loads. I can do other things. Yeah. You know, like other creative content, like in my flat or something. Mm -hmm. So. Which you did some amazing creating co creative <laughs> content in your flat during lockdown. Yeah, no, we got really bored. I actually said like, when we first went to lockdown, I was like, I'm not going to do anything. Like, I was like, I'm just going to take yeah. this time to just be. And then like, kind of got like a couple of months in, I was a bit like, kind of want to do something and yeah. then like, all my housemates and stuff like they're all dancers and stuff and I was like let's do something yeah so no, we just spent the whole day like did the most it was <laughs> amazing yeah I wasn't expecting it to like I don't know I got like a really nice response from it but I mm -hmm. wasn't expecting it to be like that I just yeah. thought it was a bit like oh no I thought it was yeah I was like oh my god it kind of goes to show as well that I think more I learned from that more that I don't need a mm. full-on production to create stuff yeah which was great for me because i always kind of felt like oh i can't do this because i don't have shit loads of money to do this yeah. music video it's going to cost thousands of pounds mm -hmm. whereas i realized that actually you can as long as you've got a camera and yeah. some mates around you you, like, you can do it so. yeah 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 well and i think like there are so many different ways of doing stuff yeah like there is yeah i mean like endless amounts of yeah. ways you can work around things without having like to spend sh yeah, yeah shit loads um in terms of like looks do you feel like there's like a pressure to be consistent with having like your look yeah it's weird though Should you tell you what like i don't really go shopping that much really yeah like a lot of my stuff like i just re-churn it out mm. i'm the same i like do you know what i mean just keep everything and then, i find it quite yeah. hard to go shopping and find stuff that i enjoy like i like mm. so like when i do find something and i really like it i'll buy it but yeah. like that happens like maybe like five times a year yeah do you know what i mean yeah and a lot of the stuff like i just don't really throw anything away mm. i try and buy no, things yeah, that i, I don't hope throw anything away yeah i try and buy things that i hope won't go mm -hmm. out of fashion i guess yeah and then all my suits and stuff I get them all from charity shops. Yeah. Like they cost me like eight pounds. Amazing. Do you have to, are they leg yeah. Do you know wise, what? Yeah. leg length? It's so weird. I feel like, I don't know, like these people that are putting these these stuff in it's to all the tool charity shops, so they're all tall, yeah. <laughs> I love that. I feel like I always get the best selection. Yeah. It's like all the people that are like, I was about to say normal height then, but like <laughs> everyone that's like six foot, Yeah. I feel like that's quite like a, people want like, they're in demand. Yeah. Whereas like for my leg, they're not. Oh, okay. So then, yeah. So then, they're the ones. That they're the ones that are always for. free. So yeah, like, I always yeah, find yeah, the suits sense. that are kind of like a bit oversized that yeah. would look like trench coats on other people, but me, it would just look a bit oversized. So mm -hmm. I can get away with it. That's super cool. Yeah. Lucky. Um, what would you say your like staple outfit was? Like your go-to Charles outfit? It would have to be a heel, like a little Cuban heel, like mm -hmm. a Cuban heel, an open shirt. Yeah. I'm like proper into like silk pajama shirts. Mm, I nice. keep buying like these old silk pajama shirts and like wearing them as like day shirts mm. and definitely a hat. 
Nice. And some big dangly earrings or yeah. something. Yeah, and all your rings. Are yeah, all my little, my little babies. Love that. So let's go like 50 years into the future. Yeah. So you'll be like... 70. 77? 76. 76. Um, what, how have you evolved? Where are you? What are you wearing? Who are you then? Oh, that's a hard question. I guess, um, well, I hope I'm still just fucking fab. Like, I, I mm. mean, by that point, I'm hoping that I'm going to be dressed with like feather boas and like huge yeah. fucking Amazing. long trailing um, Those, like, dressing gowns down things it? with yeah, the big yeah, yeah. fluffy, I've just running about to like down to Greg's in mm -hmm. that and a big Amazing. hat um but yeah I mean at that point I hope yeah I guess that I'm just happy mm -hmm. doing what I want to do rather Amazing. than yeah cool and so yeah music out as and when yeah and working on lots of new stuff yeah yeah, yeah. it's gonna be I feel like it's gonna be a good year we're gonna yeah I feel like people are gonna People are also going to like find out about a bit more about me as a person. Mm -hmm. I feel like like a lot of my songwriting and stuff have kind of been about other people, like relationships and stuff like that, like within people. Whereas I feel like now, I feel like this next sort of stuff, people might find out a bit more about me as a person, mm -hmm. um, which I'm excited about. I'm Amazing. a bit nervous, but yeah. Well, we're excited too. Yeah, so thank you. we will stay tuned and definitely. Thank you for having me. Soon. No, thank you. <laughs> Brings down to some major scales and to a sudden. The notes of a love song dancing to the morning. Thank you.